Hello and welcome to another episode with the Toronto Dog Whisperer. Um, so today is going to be uh, an episode uh, on dogs that have separation anxiety and um, what's going to be unique about today is I'm going to actually show you all the steps from step one with, with a dog that has uh, separation anxiety. So this little guy, his name is Sparkles. He is a toy uh, poodle and I am very uh, privileged to work with this guy because he's 15 years old which is uh, a really amazing accomplishment for for any dog to to be that old and to uh, um, you know still be as active and as cute as this guy you can see how cute he is he's adorable so uh, this is my neighbor's dog and we're going to be working uh, with him to to help work him through some of his uh, anxiety problems. So um, the first step is uh, always to take them for a walk. So I've already taken him for a walk around uh, the hallway. Uh, he's already been inside and we're just working through some of the initial steps um, of, uh, of his anxiety. You can see he's a bit anxious. Um, there's my dogs there just chilling out. And I do have him on a leash just to help uh, help uh, with with dealing with his anxiety so um, dogs normally have uh, a fight-or-flight type of scenario especially when they're anxious or nervous so the leash just allows me to um, help keep them calm and to uh, help them to deal with the situation instead of running away from it so uh, you can see there's no tension on the leash uh, he walked really well um, he's used to being in the leadership role, uh, but in this case, uh, he's going to have to take his cues from me, uh, which is a good thing. So um, I do have my dogs here as well. Uh, he has met them uh, briefly in the hallway, but this is the first time he's going to be spending any uh, serious time with them. So I'm going to be using a couple different techniques. The owners do not... Uh, keep him in a crate uh, but I'm going to use the crate because it's an excellent tool that you can then wean him off of um, um, at a later date once uh, his anxiety um, settles down a little bit so um, I've already done a video on this but the dog that I was working with uh, before in that video um, I'd already done a lot of work so really brief explanation but how I do uh, my videos most of the time I uh, I work with dogs because they need uh, my 100% attention and then afterwards I'll shoot a video uh, because it's hard to obviously focus and concentrate on the dog and shoot a video at the same time but I'm gonna attempt to do it today um, so the first step is just getting him um, relaxed which is uh, you can see he's a little bit uh, uh, anxious, but he's he's coping with it. So, okay, <laughs> he's shaking a little bit, but that's that's normal. Uh, whenever dogs are used to doing something to relieve their anxiety, and then they don't have access to it, um, th there's a period which they're 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 dealing with with how to behave differently. So what I'm asking him to do is just to be nice and calm not anxious 
and just to relax. And there okay. You go. Um, I did some work with Sparkles off camera, um, and it wasn't really exciting, so I didn't show it. And basically, it's just waiting for him to calm down. Uh, it took about, I'm going to say, 20 or 30 minutes where I was just sitting with him, um, waiting for him to calm down, uh, staying neutral, not saying anything to him, not petting him, not to talking to him or anything like that, just sitting with him and letting him calm down. And this is where a lot of people have trouble. Uh, it's with um, doing what's necessary and having the patience to um, stay with their dog until they calm down, which can take a while. Although in retrospect, 15, 20 minutes, even a half hour uh, isn't that long um, period of time but when you're going through it it's really frustrating because you figure uh, he won't um, calm down but he has calmed down quite a bit now one of his uh, triggers uh, for his anxiety is getting close to the door so every time I um, uh, you can hear him whining a little bit there every time I um, uh, walked away he went straight for the door and then started whining a little bit. Uh, so now he's at the point where uh, he's a little bit more comfortable and you can see he's going back to the door. And I'm gonna let him just because I wanna show um, the behavior. Hey little guy, come here. There you go. So he's a lot more calm. You can see his ears are back and he's uh, not shaking anymore or whining and he's using his nose. That's a good indication that he's a lot more calm than he was before and the anxiety levels have gone down. So this is what he was doing before. He was going to the door, but he was staying there. Now he went to the door, but now he's coming back in and he's actually following, which is good. Uh, this is a lot for a dog to process. Uh, he's in a completely new environment with new people. That's really good. Um, and he's with dogs that he's met before, but he hasn't really built a bond with yet. He's used to being in the leadership position, but um, I'm in the leadership position in my environment. Okay, so he just jumped up onto the couch, um, which is probably something that he does at home. And I'm just going to grab the leash and, and get him down. I'm not going to scold him or anything like that. Um, it's important to note that when dogs make mistakes, it's, it, it's not a good reaction to get angry with them. So you don't want to convey uh, any negative uh, emotion. So this is what he was doing before, just sitting by the door. So what we want him to do is to interact. So I'm going to kneel down and call him. Come on, Sparkle. And I want to see if he comes back on his own. If he doesn't, that's okay. Um, there he comes. So the, the real key in, in doing any type of exercise with the dog that's anxious or nervous is patience. There you go. You see how he, he came on his own? So the first uh, few times, well, oh, he had to go at Ken's. Uh, the first few times I would grab the leash and actually bring him back because he wouldn't come back on his own. And that's why I left the leash on there, is because you want access to leading the dog uh, away from his source of anxiety without putting in too much physical effort. That's why I left the leash on him. Um, so three keys to success when working with a dog that's anxious or nervous um, is patience, that's number one, uh, persistence and practice. So I, um, took him I brought him back from the door probably about six or seven times in a row nice and calmly and now you can see he's in a much more calm state so uh, the next stage is getting him uh, comfortable with the crate I'm gonna use the crate first and then I'm gonna work without the crate just because um, the crate allows uh, for less movement in terms of it helps them feel more comfortable it's like a den for a dog it's not a bad thing it's not a cage it's not but restricting them 
It's about helping them to feel comfortable. So what I'm going to do is, um, you can see he's going back up onto the couch. That's okay. So we're just going to grab him again. And we're going to lead him into the crate. So I'm not forcing him in, I'm not doing anything um, to push him in or anything like that. I grabbed the leash and just let him in. And you can see the door is wide open. I'm not restricting him in any way, but I do want him to get comfortable with the crate. Uh, and there's a nice comfy bed in there and all that kind of stuff. And then the next stage is going to be closing the door. So he's calm now in the crate with the door open, which is really, really good. And so now I'm just gonna close the crate. Um, and I'm gonna see his reaction. So before he whined quite a lot and barked and the rest of it, but this is the first stage. We just want him comfortable uh, in the crate. Um, it's not a negative experience. He went on there, he went in there on his own volition. Um, and he's nice and calm. He's not whining. He's not crying. He's not barking. He's not shaking uh, He's much much more calm, but again that process took about you know 20 30 minutes of me just sitting with him and Patiently waiting for him to calm down um, Takes a little time um, and it's not easy to do for those uh, without a lot of patience, so uh, if you have uh, you know um, a little bit less tolerance for uh, this kind of thing uh, it helps to to have other people help you out with it okay so now what I'm gonna do is uh, walk away from the crate which is the first step you see he's lying down on his own and he's nice and calm which is really good so I'm gonna actually uh, step out of view and I'm gonna go into my bedroom but I'm going to leave the door open. So that way, he can't see me. He can obviously hear me, but he's staying calm, which is really, really good. No anxiety, no stress, not anything negative like that. So I'm going to, Take it a step further and I'm going to go into my washroom. So again, he can't see me. He's staying nice and calm, uh, which is really good. So I'm just going to stay in here for a little while. And I'm just going to There you go, he's nice and calm. He can't see. So I'm just going to close the door. Ken, let's go lay down. Oh, you can. He's getting a little bit anxious now. It's okay, that's part of the process. It's totally normal. There you go. There's that anxiety. Okay. So I'm not going to open the crate because I don't want him to respond um, to understand that when he starts whining, he gets what he wants, which is normally what happens. Uh, so dogs are very aware of the reactions that they get to certain behaviors. So if a dog uh, begs and then gets a treat they understand that all they have to do is beg or whine to get a treat or whatever it is that they want to get out of you they will try different things until they find something that works so I'm gonna disagree with the behavior so I just snapped because I want to snap him out of out of what he was doing. You see, he stopped. There you go. And this is uh, the process. 
The yawning is part of uh, releasing anxiety. So it's not that he's tired. The licking is also a mild form of anxiety. And we just want to repeat this process of getting him calm, stepping away, uh, going out of sight, and waiting. And it, it's a very slow process uh, in the initial stages. Uh, that's why you need a ton, a ton of patience for this type of of exercise. This is definitely not easy to do. Uh, you can see he's calming down, which is what I want. With the door closed. All right. So a little whimpering. This is part of it. He's dealing with the, the situation. This is something he's uh, not used to doing. Um, He's used to getting his own way, which is very common for little dogs, which, you know, a lot of times people want to spoil their dogs and there's definitely nothing wrong with that. But if you're spoiling them in the wrong way, um, you're enabling their anxiety. That's not healthy for them. So uh, what we're doing with him is we're showing him a different way. We're, we're telling him that there's no need to be anxious. There's no need to be worried about anything. Nothing is going on. You can see how calm my dogs are. They're just chilling out. They're totally used to me doing this type of exercise. So they're helping um, share their <clears throat> calm energy. Although it would be uh, the same process even without them. It just so happens that they're here. So anything that you can do to help is, is, is always a good thing. Uh, you want to make things as... as easy as possible because it's a difficult situation. So now that he's lying down, he's nice and calm, we're going to step away again. Okay. See as I step away, he starts whining again. So we're just going to disagree. And the reason why I use the snap is is uh, it's a very consistent sound. So instead of using your voice, um, your voice always carries emotion. And it's very difficult to have a very consistent voice in terms of what you're saying and that kind of thing. So you don't want to convey any emotion. Like I'm not upset with them, I'm not frustrated or anything like that. But you need to disagree with the behavior. So the whining, you need to snap them out of it. There you go. And you can see this, this is a process that takes a lot of time. So I'm going to uh, go off camera to do a little bit more practice with him. And then I'll jump back in later on. Okay, so it's been about... Ooh, I would say another 30, 40 minutes uh, to get him to calm down. And this is totally normal, totally typical for dogs that have uh, anxiety problems. Uh, it takes them a long, long time the first time you do it. So the first time you do an exercise, one of the most important things to keep in mind is that it, the, it's going to take a long time. Um, as you do it more uh, regularly, it'll get easier. So the second time you do it, uh, it'll be a lot quicker. The third time will be a lot faster than that, and so on and so forth. So whenever you have a dog that has these types of problems, it doesn't just go away uh, in an hour or two. It, 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 it takes a long time, and the behavior will trail off. It won't just suddenly stop. Uh, so uh, this is part of the process. He was calm and now he's he's getting anxious again. I did leave him for like uh, like 10 minutes on his own and he was calm but now you can see he's starting up again. Now what's typical for dogs like this who are spoiled um, they're used to getting exactly what they want and they know exactly how to get it. So they understand that um, 
the noise that they are making is unpleasant to human beings and it elicits the response that they're looking for. Um, another thing that's very typical is that dogs uh, who are used to doing this type of thing, uh, they're very persistent because they're used to outlasting the humans. Um, so uh, however long that uh, a human uh, refuses to do what they want, uh, they then persist uh, with the behavior and eventually the humans give in and they're used to that. So uh, he's very persistent. Uh, some people call it stubborn, but uh, this is just a, a persistence thing. So eventually he's going to understand, there you go, he's starting to relax now, that I am more persistent than he is. And then eventually he's just going to calm down and relax. And once he gets used to the fact that uh, nothing bad is going to happen to him, um, you know, he's going to be a lot better off. So it's a really important thing uh, <clears throat> to note when you're doing this uh, that y you need to expect that the first time that you do it is going to be the most difficult. So uh, there's Kenzie, nice and calm. Uh, so what I'm going to do now that he's calm is I'm going to actually attempt to leave uh, the condo for the first time. Okay, so uh, fingers crossed. I'm not sure how it's going to go. Um, it's okay if he makes a mistake, uh, gets anxious and nervous. What I'll do is just come back in, calm him down, uh, wait until he's completely calm and just repeat the process. Uh, so let's give this a shot and see how we go. I do have a sparkles cam set up as well to show you what he does uh, when I leave. So have a go at this. So I'm just gonna see if the sound of the door is usually a trigger. Just gonna go out of my hallway. And we're gonna listen. So it's been a little while, and that's good. Uh, no barking, no whining. Uh, he stayed nice and calm, and he's still calm. So this is a good point to take a break. Um, so even though uh, the exercises take a very long time, it's really important that you're patient and you stick with it until they're calm. Once they're calm and they've kind of understood that you know I left nothing bad happened and he remained calm this is a good time to uh, take a break let him out and let him have a bit of a play so you can see I open the door and he comes out and he feels good hey puppy so I'm gonna give him a little bit of time to have a play you can see my dogs are a little bit excited too one of the things I'm not going to let him do though is go to the door uh, because that's uh, a trigger for his anxiety. So I'm okay with him exploring. Uh, that's totally normal for, for dogs to do, uh, but I don't want him lingering at the door for too long because that's what he's, he's used to doing uh, when he gets his anxiety. Come on, sparkles. Okay, so what I don't want him to do is to get anxious again. So I'm just gonna lead him away. You can see there's no tension on the leash. I'm just leading him away from the door so that his anxiety doesn't get triggered again. So 
uh, you can have a bit of a play with the dogs and just chill out for a while uh, and we'll take a break and then we'll get back at it and repeat the the process again hey look at that it's a ball okay we're gonna take a break we're gonna have a bit of a play and then we'll repeat the process in a little bit okay so <clears throat> you can see sparkles has had a bit of a break and a bit of a play and he's nice and calm along with my dogs nice and calm which is great so <clears throat> what I'm gonna do now uh, because he did well uh, inside the crate and <clears throat> me leaving I'm actually going to um, attempt leaving him um, inside uh, without being in the crate because that's more realistic of what the um, owners have access to so they don't use a crate with him although I do recommend um, any dog that has anxiety or separation anxiety using a crate initially at least you can always wean them off uh, the crate um, for example my dogs um, don't um, use a crate while I'm gone um, they're free to roam and that kind of thing um, but I wean them off of it so uh, this is just going to be an attempt at uh, doing the same type of exercise, but without uh, being inside the crate. Uh, using the crate is a great initial step because it helps them to uh, deal with their anxiety. You can see he's pretty tuckered out and nice and calm, which is the way we want him. So I'm not going to say or do anything. I'm just going to, actually, I'm just going to try stepping into my bathroom and closing the door. Sorry about my laundry. He can't see me. He can't hear me. Okay, that's good. So, he's still nice and calm. Obviously, they're a little bit curious about what I'm doing and that kind of thing. Uh, but we're going to attempt to go outside again and see how that goes. Okay? And this is all about repetition. This is the practice part of it. the door. Gonna listen. Now, initially, you want to uh, st start with small intervals of time when you're outside, and then slowly, slowly extend that period of time that he's <coughs> inside but still calm. As you can see, there's no barking, there's no whining. It's really good really really good okay we're gonna go back inside look at that he's still in the exact same spot fantastic success so that's it guys I mean that's a, a huge success uh, it's still a first step I mean this is something that you want to uh, repeat and uh, do on a regular basis to get them used to you leaving and them staying calm but this is a huge accomplishment. I mean, I do have a clip that I'm going to show of him barking uh, just so you can hear what it's like or what he used to be like.
And this is how much progress that uh, uh, you know we've made together uh, in the span of I'd say total maybe a couple hours. But this is a good investment of time. Uh, the amount of stress that dogs are under while they experience separation anxiety is, is pretty significant. And he would bark for hours. Um, so not only is it, you know, uh, not pleasant for the dog, it's also annoying to your neighbors and that kind of thing. It also makes you feel guilty and bad and the rest of it. So if you know that you can leave your dog um, while going to work or going shopping or whatever it is and they stay nice and calm, uh, that's also going to make you feel better um, and less guilty and the rest of it. So that's it, guys. We've had a, a good amount of success. Uh, what I would recommend to this, uh, this person's, uh, uh, sorry, this dog's owner is to repeat this exercise, do it on her own uh, with the household. And within uh, a few days of practice, uh, his separation anxiety will trail off and it won't be an issue anymore. Um, so that's it from us. So Sparkle, you don't know what we say at the end of our videos. What do we say? If you love your dog, take them for a walk. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Goodbye, Sparkles. Sparkles, bye.